You didn't make it to the march today, did you? I didn't see it at the march today. I'm like, uh, you know who my partner Ian is? Sure. Before he knew you, actually. Oh, <laughs> Been with you? Yeah, she likes to sit in the Occupational Health Clinical Centers where uh, these photo, uh, most of these photographs came from. Um, we're uh, a three clinic, uh, three facility operation here, Binghamton and Canton. And aside from um, helping uh, treat workers for uh, things that are related to illnesses or injuries they've had because of work, we also do a lot, we try to do a lot of prevention work. And so one of the unique things about this is that we are not just a medical center. And if you want to um, find out more, there's uh, sheets on the uh, sh shelf there. Um, but we do outreach and education. So Raylani Prudhomme, who's here, is from Canton and does outreach and education there. Um, the live streaming at the other end is being hosted partly by Rick uh, Sprout, who does outreach and education in the Southern Tier, and I do it out of uh, the Syracuse office. Um, there are a number of staff from the clinic here, Michael Lax, uh, Greg Sawinski, uh, Jeanette Seckler. Um, so if you want to find out more about us, uh, you're welcome to chat folks up afterwards. Um, I want to start by, first of all, thanking Julie Gozan, who was the person who really got this started. Julie is on the board here at ArtRage and is also on our advisory board. And um, I heard the story tonight about how she uh, became, uh, she met Earl years ago and had a print of his and was talking to people at ArtRage about how it would be nice to have some of Earl's uh, photographs here in the exhibit, and then she walked into our clinic, and there were the photos on the wall. Um, and so uh, it was uh, her inspiration that got this started. Um, I knew Earl from a number of years ago. Um, so two of the photographs down at the back there are from a collection that I was given when I graduated from UMass Lowell in the mid-90s. Um, and although I'd seen Earl's photographs before, they were the first time I actually got to possess it. Um, and I'm a photographer in another life, so um, I really appreciate that, uh, the work that he does. And in fact, in, um, he's had a number of awards over the years. He's been doing this work for years. You can find out more by looking at that uh, little story over on the wall there or on the um, photograph there. And he's going to, to talk more about his uh, work. But I, would th I think the first time I actually met him in person was in 2001 at the American Public Health Association meeting where the Occupational Health and Safety section gave him an award. 
I think it was that year, um, Alice Hamilton Award, and I got to present it. And I, at that time, called Earl the Ansel Adams of workplace photography. <laughs> Little did I know, as people reminded me when I was at the opening here, that there was actually a much more local reference. Milton Rogovin, is that, have I got his name right? Rogovin, um, who, had done, who did photographs um, over the years of workers in the Buffalo area. So check those out. Um, there aren't very many people that do this kind of work. And uh, Earl is uh, somebody who has uh, done it in coal mines, has done it in healthcare facilities, done it in agricultural work, um, literally around the country. Um, the last time I worked with you, I think, was on the Holding Mother Earth uh, Sacred Project, which was photographs of um, indigenous peoples in Canada and the United States who were doing energy uh, efficiency kinds of projects. And I had the privilege and pleasure to um, see Earl at work in Winnipeg, where I'm from, um, and uh, <coughs> to have a nice supper with him. Um, so uh, Earl's been doing this for a long time. His talk tonight is going to cover the 50 years that he's been doing this. I just want to sh very quickly show two photographs that mean something to me, and you're welcome to look at this book later. The first one here is of Shirley Mack. And I don't know if you could see, but she's holding, with, with braces on, is holding a bunch of pills. And I do ergonomics work. And to me, this is an incredibly evocative picture of someone in pain. And the fact that Earl was able to do that, to actually get her to, to take that, allow him to take that picture. Um, she was in pain as a result of the poultry work that she did. And the other one that, that really speaks to me, um, and I don't know if you're going to look at this one tonight. We are. Um, but uh, just very quickly, is a photograph of a young woman with a, uh, a folded flag helped by various people. And her husband had survived Vietnam but did not survive a coal mine. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is just sort of the fact that Earl was able to get this close to get this much respect from people and have that much sort of rapport with folks that he could get this kind of picture says something about his work. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about what your, your life's worth. Um, just so you know, the booklet that you've got here and the reason that this has been put on at this time is that um, April 28th is what they call Workers' Memorial Day. We've had a, um, a week of activities around that. Um, and the Art Ridge ex exhibit was put on at this time to coincide with this um, effort to remember workers who've been killed and injured or made sick by their jobs. And this uh, includes photographs that were up in the, um, the window here of 42 workers who died in this region uh, in the last year <coughs> and recognition for the 3,000 or so that probably died of occupational disease in upstate New York and 16 anonymous workers who we don't know the names of or the circumstances of their deaths quite yet. So um, there's other stuff in there, but uh, take it away, think about it, and I think that what Earl has to say will really complement, I hope, what's in there. Thank you. Earl. Thank you, Dorothy, Kim, Rose, Greg, Julie, so many of you who have made this event possible, I most appreciate, appreciate it. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a long road for many of us in uh, working in occupational and environmental health. And um, uh, I like photography because it becomes our history. Uh, it uh, reminds me of who I met along the way, and uh, my wife, uh, who has been an attorney for the Mine Workers Union, reminds me that I have a pretty good recollection of those names that go with the faces, and uh, so I'll share some of those stories as we go along uh, this evening. Uh, first, I want to give you a little quote. Um, it goes this way. Art is a hammer, excuse me, art is not a mirror held up to reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. And that's a Bertolt Brecht quote. 
that I identify with very, um, uh, very directly. Um, the other aspect that I find uh, important is to humanize my subjects so that the viewers of my pictures can see themselves and find the common ground that they share with one another. Uh, and to the, to the extent I'm successful, you can see your desire for respect and human dignity within the subjects of these photographs. So we're going to start out in art school. And this is perhaps the first picture I ever took that has environmental health consequences. It's of uh, kids in the Lower East Side where I was in art school uh, who uh, kind of trapped indoors in a cold weather day, bad weather day, um, and they were exposed to lead paint hazards in the tenement uh, they were living in. Uh, and so that consciousness <coughs> was brought about to me by my instructor who said, Earl, I don't want to talk about any pictures that you take unless they express a personal point of view. And it's a powerful lesson that has stayed with me through the years. And so after art school, I spent time with this man in Atlanta living in his home as a trainee to become a VISTA volunteer. And that introduced me to coal miners um, in Appalachia. And that was where my project was based in East Tennessee. Um, coal miners who were experiencing uh, brown lung disease. It was then the most dangerous job in America. After VISTA, I became the photographer for the United Mine Workers Journal for a period of uh, five years. It was an opportunity to photograph the best work that miners were doing in their individual locals to protect themselves uh, from the harsh mining environment. Uh, and so miners could learn from one another about the work uh, and uh, ways that they could make their job safer. Uh, this is Sudi Krusenberry. Her husband had his back broken in a roof fall. Um, she became an activist in the uh, Brookside strike, made famous by the film Harlan County, USA, the Academy Award winning film. Uh, and um, this family really opened up my uh, opportunities with uh, the coal mining community uh, and um, my subjects over the years. This is uh, Emery Howard. Uh, he had uh, been seriously burned in a Pittston mine explosion that kill, killed six. Uh, one of them, uh, the first women to die in a mine uh, after women had uh, earned the right to uh, work uh, side by side uh, male coal miners. This is the DHU coal camp in Logan County. It was a camp built by the Youngstown Sheet and Tube Company. And for me, this image expresses what I call the colony of Appalachia. The the wealth is being brought right through the middle of town. Uh, the companies are far away in New York and Pittsburgh. Um, and the lot of the miners is to suffer from black lung and uh, the highest fatality rate of any industrial job in the United States. Um, here you see miners. Entering the mine in Rushton, in the Rushton mine in Clearfield County, uh, Pennsylvania. The coal is being doled out, uh, making that mountain at the top of the foot. To me, this picture expresses the vulnerability of the miner in the mine environment. This is a continuous, uh, continuous mining bits, uh, and uh, the miner in. Uh, the same uh, mine you saw the miners entering in the previous photo. Wow. Wow. This is Blaine Lester. 
and I asked him what his job was like in a low coal mine with a 30 inch scene. He said, well, Earl, it's a little like working under your kitchen table all day. Um, and I think he put it pretty aptly, because most tables are about 29 inches high, and uh, uh, for me, it was one of my most challenging assignments to capture uh, the uh, experience of workers in a low coal mine. This is Buck Kopchak. He's also in the Clearfield Mine in Pennsylvania. He's using a large torque, or torque wrench to test the tightness of a giant expansion bolt that links the loosely cleaved sedimentary rock to the uh, harder rock strata above. And uh, I may have mentioned it before, roof falls are the most dangerous um, uh, accident that it can uh, impact a miner. Uh, and so if uh, Buck looks worried, it's because his dad lost his life doing the same job two years before. Uh, and so this guy, uh, his nickname was Corky. Uh, I think I can know why. Uh, he had the most dangerous job. He was setting temporary roof supports out in advance of the roof holder. Um, this is Bernice Dombrowski one of the first women to win the right in the fight that went all the way to the Supreme Court, to not have to have a job in a um, shirt factory or uh, a, as a waitress, but to command the same wages as a union coal miner. Uh, Bernice is hauling a temporary roof support, um, and uh, here she is uh, applying rock dust uh, to cover the loose coal dust, which is one of the greatest explosion hazards in a coal mine. And so methane gas can be ignited, uh, and you can have a confined uh, ignition, but if the coal dust gets ignited as well, and it's traveling through the air, uh, through the ventilation, a devastating explosion can occur. And so we have uh, Brenda Osborne, uh, Emily Wampler and Brenda Price, they're really proud of their accomplishment. Uh, they're photographed at the end of the shift, and uh, they ended up on the cover of the UMWA journal. Uh, <coughs> some of the men were not pleased, but they adjusted. <laughs> uh, part of their education process. Uh, and um, this is a picture that has sort of become a marker photograph to me. Uh, it, uh, it has a life of its own, and um, uh, people have made paintings and illustrations from it, as, uh, as well as it being published rather widely. This is Lee Hipshire, age 49, 26 years underground. He survived to age 59, dying from complications of black lung disease. Um, I followed uh, Lee for quite a few years, um, realizing that he was about to retire because of his health circumstance, and um, asked him to pose against the mine mouth so that the background, the dim background, would allow me to show those coal dust filled pores in his face. And if he's looking right at you, it's is precisely what I asked him to do, to look right into your own eyes and uh, see him uh, in his um, circumstances as a coal miner. This is the monitoring device uh, coal miners wore in dusty jobs underground. The company had the responsibility to take these sample um, filters out every shift and report to the Mine Enforcement Safety Administration about the coal dust levels in the mine. It was a subject uh, uh, or a uh, system, I should say, where tampering occurred on a rampant basis. And uh, the results were not reliable. Uh, it was determined through a, a variety of investigations. 
Orville McCoy wrote the, U the United My Workers Journal uh, describing his difficulty as a black loan victim. Uh, several poignant letters. I traveled to his home and Orville described his life as a healthy man, and how he'd been laid low, um, forced to take early retirement. And again, you see um, Orville posed with window light against the shadows of the wall behind the window. And that is very purposeful. Um, the window light provides kind of a sculptural um, view, uh, a dramatic uh, rendition of him um, against a background that allows him to emerge. Uh, and I included that little tree outside as a metaphor for Orville as a young, healthy man. Uh, when he, uh, when this picture is combined with his quote about his life as a younger man, enjoying the outdoors, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the picture and words come together in a powerful way. These are miners in Donald Rasmussen's Beckley, West Virginia Black Lung Clinic. They're awaiting lung function testing to determine whether they can qualify for uh, state black lung benefits and federal black lung benefits. It's a rigorous process. Um, uh, Dr. Asmussen, uh, who um, was a hero to minors, uh, he uh, is shown here observing a minor uh, during a treadmill test. Uh, you can see uh, the various aspects of a lung function test <coughs> ruling for the minor. And Dr. Rasmussen showed me lung sections mm -hmm. from minors who had died from black lung disease uh, and he later compared them to uh, a healthy section that's uh, on the table below. The Scotiamine disaster claimed 26 lives in 1976. Uh, it was uh, uh, an explosion that uh, occurred first when 13 miners were killed. Uh, 13 miners were killed and their bodies were removed from the mine. And then rescue and uh, uh, mine inspection team went in. Uh, a compressor that was activated by low pressure in the tank flipped on 